Hi, and welcome to On Console, the video blog about my journey to becoming a certified NASA flight controller. Hi again, Jenny here. This episode will be about S-Band, which is Segment 3, Module 1 of the NASA Flight Controller Training. So there are two S-Band antennas. The high gain antenna, or HGA, supports high data rate, while the low gain antenna, or LGA, supports the low data rate. Now, there are a couple of differences between these two, one of them being what data rate they can support, but also the HGA can move around to track satellites, while the LGA is stationary, though omnidirectional. But it still can't quite cover as much of the sky as the HGA. Now, we track the TDRA satellites with these antennas as we go around the world. Now, as far as the TDRA or tracking and data relay satellites, there are five that we switch between, depending on their location around the Earth. We also have information on when the antennas need to switch over, and the S-band auto tracks its current TDRA based on the information that it's receiving from the computers. Now, it used to be that we had to send hundreds of timed commands every day for every single TDRA switch because that kind of happens a lot when you circle the Earth every 90 minutes. Luckily, we had some awesome software developers who created a tool that helps us streamline that process. Now, as it is with most systems, we have different displays that give us information on the health and status of the S-Band system. Now, in this system, there are multiple boxes with different responsibilities. Some of those things include compressing the audio and data to be sent on, adding in different frequencies, and also amplifying that signal so that it can be sent to the satellites. Now, these displays show us that we have a good signal, that the signals are locked on, and even how much work each box is doing so that we can tell if there's any blockage. These displays also tell us what angles the antennas are pointed at and what angles the CNC, or the computer in charge, thinks they're pointed at so that we can make sure they match. S-Band is also heavily involved with audio, which will be the next episode. But Cronus themselves have an actual display called a Christmas tree, which is a nickname for two columns of indications that show us that the audio is going through and is processing correctly, and also flashes whenever we're calling up to the ISS crew or when they're calling down to us. Lastly, we learned about the S-Band telemetry configuration. Now, if you remember that train from a while back, one of the train cars can be used for data from the Columbus module. Now, we can switch out the train cars, or the packets, as was explained before, or we can change the preemption rate or the throttle rate. On our side, Cronus changes the throttle rate, which is how much data is available for the Columbus Control Center. On their side, they change the preemption rate, which is how much data they're actually using. Think of it like a water pipe. The throttle rate is how big the pipe actually is, and the preemption rate is how much water is flowing through. That's all for this episode. Be sure to check out my other sites and pages, and take a look at the first or previous episodes if you haven't already. Well, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next week and for many more, as we get one step closer to being on console. Thanks, and have a great week!